Let's start. Hello, Jen. Hi. Hi, Dr. Sharika. How are you? Uh, students? Oh. Ma'am, should I start? Yes, please do. Yes. A very good afternoon, our honorable guest, Ms. Chaini Harya, our faculty members, and my dear friends. I, Ria Kadam, General Secretary of WIE, IEEE, VSAIT, and a student's branch, would like to warmly welcome you all on the day five of three, Adri 2020, to break the bias. A collaboration between IEEE, WI, BSIT, and Women's Development Cell, WDC. We held a women's health session yesterday where we learned about how important mental health is, what problems can arise if it is ignored, and how it affects our performance. And today we'll talk about our personality grooming. So I would like to thank everyone present here today. I would like to hand it over to Ruchi to introduce our speaker for today. Thank you. Our topic for today is personality grooming, where we will be talking about doing the right thing at the right time in social settings. And we have with us Ms. Jenny Harya to discuss this topic. Ms. Jenny Harya, an XLRI MBA and ex-investment banker, wants to change the way women shop for clothes in India. She believes that every woman, regardless of size or shape, deserves to be comfortable in her own skin. She founded J with a goal of disrupting the stereotypical way of sizing clothing or people by letters, small, medium, et cetera, or numbers that is 10, 12 to 14, et cetera, by utilizing cutting edge AI enabled me measuring technology. J is a technology advanced bespoke women's Western wear brand that offers customizable, customizable high quality clothing in size U your body, your size. Ma'am, I would like to welcome you with a small sapling from our side. Thank you so much. Thank you for joining us today. So without taking too much of your time, let's start with the session for today. Thank you. Thank you. Jenny, would you like to share anything? No, no. Uh, yeah, I do have a deck. Uh, okay, see. so we can just unshare our uh, PPT and just uh, make a spotlight to Jenny. Okay, thank you. Yeah, you can continue. Sure. Uh, thanks a lot for this wonderful introduction, uh, team. Uh, it is my pleasure to be here and to be a part of your Women's Day celebration. Uh, first of all, a uh, very happy Women's Day to all the women out here, belated though, but um, it's really great to be talking to such budding, uh, successful people uh, just on their way of, uh, on the path of success. Uh, today, I am going, I'm here to be talking about personality grooming, how you can make an impression and you can speak so much without really speaking at all. Uh, as rightly introduced, uh, I am the founder and CEO of a brand called Jay. As we go on through this session, I'd like to tell you all a little more about what Jay is, what we do and how we can contribute a little bit to your personality grooming. Okay. Um, uh, just sorry. <clears throat> uh, first of all, uh, if I may ask, I would like you all to tell me what you think about uh, 
these two women through these two photos what are your first impressions created in your mind through these two photos uh i'm not sure if people can respond through chat um let me just see just a second uh dr sarika um, will be people be able to respond through chat or anything hello Ma'am, your screen is not visible actually. Oh, okay. Yeah. Sure. Would you like them to respond in the chat? Yes, it will be helpful. I just wanted to know uh, their view on what they see or what they think of when they see these photos. Ma'am, I would like to answer. Sure, please go ahead. I can give an adjective to that, or I would say it's bold. Like which one is what? Like the first photo, second photo. Oh, uh, the second photo is bold. Okay. Yeah. And I and feel that uh, in first photo she is very comfortable at what she's wearing, and she's not caring. So it's basically careless. Or like, I mean, carefree. she's not worrying about yeah, carefree. Sorry. Yes. Oh okay, no problem. That's that's a great one. Uh, anyone else? Anyone who would like to try? Okay, let me take it. And as rightly uh, pointed out, the first person is a really carefree person. She does not care what women think about her. She's probably not in a professional setting, really caring about first impressions. She might be on a vacation and chilling out. She does not want to convey out that she's serious about anything. But uh, and at the same time, if you look at the second person, she looks like she's someone who's really decked up to go for a very important meeting. She wants to um, create a statement or say out loud that she is really serious about what she's doing, and she takes her work very seriously, and she makes sure that she communicates it very well through the way um, she dresses up, right? I'll show you another slide, and now I want you guys to say again about what you think about these two photos. Just give me a moment. Anyone? Someone has replied on the chat. Yes, yes, ma'am. Uh, I've just messaged something in the chat box. Please have a look. Yeah, yeah, sure. I saw that. It's it's clumsy versus neat attire. Correct. It's the first one hasn't really cared to even iron her clothes. She looks like she's just gotten out of bed and come up to work. But as a second one, second um, okay, something happened to my screen. Sorry. The so second person is someone who has really taken the pain to, you know, dress up well. If you see her makeup, she's combed her hair very properly. Her clothes look ironed. This also speaks a lot about how the first person versus the second person really cares about what they do, right? The first person is mostly someone who got very late, so she doesn't really have a proper set routine. She um. just came running to work she probably wouldn't have finished her presentations or her work for as compared to that the second person is someone who would love how who you would love to see as a potential vendor um someone that uh, shouts out saying that she is very serious about her work so here what i'm trying to convey is the way you dress or the way you carry yourself speaks a thousand words about you something that you don't really know right um 
there is a quote there is a saying dress for the job you aspire rather than the job you already have right uh, so if you dress up in a way for example you have a dream that you want to be the ceo of a company or the leader of some company in the future dress as if you believe you are the leader today once you start believing that it automatically shows in the way you carry yourself and that that also speaks a thousand words about your personality so here today we'll discuss a lot about the power of power dressing how the how you power dressing creates an impact and how uh, you can take advantage of it to crack deals and become the best version of yourself okay um anyone who has any questions confusions doubts please feel free to interrupt me and ask me i would love to take them uh, as we go through the process first one the, your clothes tell a story about you for example the first uh, okay i will come up i will show you another slide and let's compare all these three women and see what kind of stories we learn about them okay the last woman this one uh she looks like someone who's extremely successful who really really knows her work very well extremely confident uh she has taken the pains to dress extremely well and the kind of clothes she is wearing also show that they are not really some normalish local kind of clothes but they really well uh, styled for her to suit her the best right the way she is walking shows a lot of confidence you the way she carries her handbag the kind of handbag she is carrying the kind of glare she is worn you can see a little bit of her makeup on her face it's not that clear but yeah sure so you see that this is someone who has perfectly made sure that she looks like a successful person and i'm sure she would be one coming back to the first person the left most person she is also dressed extremely well her clothes are ironed she looks extremely neat but for some reason she does not look as successful as the last person right why because uh, probably it shows in the way she is standing and dressed that she is someone who is still working towards achieving that point she is dressed very simply she is not really taken a lot of effort to you know um probably invest in a, a lot of stylish can off beat that can Sorry. you just do the slide show on the of uh, this um sure i was not able to see the chats that's that's the why that's why okay just a second can you see it yes yes yes, yes. yeah sure okay ha huh. so the first person um sorry i did that because i wanted to see the chats but yeah no so, problem uh yeah so the first person i like like i was explaining and please if some, if any one of you has any other point or uh, or thinks differently i'd love to hear your you all first person looks like she's serious but at the same time she is not uh, really that successful she is just on her path out and she has a lot to build with respect to confidence personality etc etc coming to the person in between um she shows a uh, slightly confusing signs she's tried to dress really well and tried to make an impact but she is not really succeeded so well in it like the person on the extreme right right she is also carrying a bag but that bag does not look powerful as the as powerful as the bag the other person is wearing she is also wearing a blazer but there is a clear mismatch in the kind of clothes she is wearing so while she looks like she is someone who is trying to be successful or trying to look like one she also looks like someone who is confused she will not really very very bold at what she wants to what she wants to say so what i am trying to say is every time you walk out uh, dressed in a particular manner you are saying a story about yourself tomorrow if you go out with a very loose fitting dress that does not really look the best probably you've not even thought of you know before wearing that dress when anyone who sees you will feel that probably you don't take yourself so seriously that is why you don't really think twice about what you are wearing and that creates a lot of difference right tomorrow for example you don't comb your hair and go then people might start thinking that you don't even really have the time to look after your hair and it creates a very shabby impression 
the next time someone comes to talk to you they will talk to you in the exact same manner like for you also if these three women come in front of you the way you talk to all of these three women will be definitely very different you won't believe your dressing and your personality say so much about you your background your friend circle your family a lot uh, and something that you might not really be thinking of even before even buying those clothes right coming to the next point it is all about the first impressions here i would like to make a point um when you go out for shopping when you say you have to shop for a party that is just for 2 3 hours you don't mind investing uh, thousands of rupees or investing in a very uh, costly piece for a party that you are going for for 2 3 hours but when you're going to work for like 9 to 10 hours every day meeting like a hundred new people you don't invest so much in those work where there is an absolute irony here that the th- most time we spend in be it or college be it or office be it anywhere that's the least amount of money we spend for now uh, you would also realize that you Uh, for the concept of fast fashion versus slow fashion right um a person who's wearing something from um not a very premium kind of a, a, an outfit it might be the same white shirt but there is a difference between the way a 300 rupees white shirt versus a 1000 rupees white shirt looks right and you can show you can see that so when you are these two people with a 300 rupees white shirt with it as against a 1000 rupees white shirt go in a very important meeting um who do you think will make a better impression or say um or just have that kind of conviction or confidence in themselves okay um so what i'm trying to say here is not that you should go for costly costly pieces but instead of buying five pieces that are not so very well um i would say not so premium uh it's better to invest in one piece that you can keep repeating and styling in different manners but it sh- it will help you make the best first impression now if you if a boss comes to your desk you 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 new in your job you've joined for the first time and your boss is coming to your desk and he sees your desk extremely shabby everything there are papers around there are books around and um, and then he comes to talk to you and you're probably not even well dressed you're just in a, in the middle of a lot of mess uh what kind of first impression do you think it will create in front of him he will obviously think that you are someone who's almost always messy as compared to you if you were sitting in a very composed manner or uh, with all your desk clean things kept quietly in a, in their right place uh, your boss is going to obviously think that yes this is someone who's really sorted right so the point is investing a little more time in doing the things right rather than uh, just going around everywhere and just messing around right so invest invest in good quality pieces that you can reuse for a longer time you have to spend the same amount of money but the kind of impression you will create in both kind of cases is very different one capsule wardrobe right a shirt a trouser a blazer any color that you like it need not be white or black uh need need not be a white black combination whatever you are comfortable with when you have to create a first impression or go for a very important meeting you have to make sure that apart from what you speak you speak through the way you dress as well invest in good accessories accessories not too loud but are made for the occasion small earrings small don't over accessorize for example today there is this shirt i'm wearing that has a lot of like fancy buttons already now if i wear neck pieces on this and then heavy bracelets on this it will start looking like i want to go for a party but a clear misfit so invest in thoughtful accessories that uh, speak more and they they they're delicate but they look great right 
and making first impressions when you're going to office you're meeting a thousand people who will be important for you in your professional ladder never demean the importance of investing in good pieces for your professional setup again be it your college be it your office be it wherever right uh third and the most important part your clothing impacts the way you think tell me uh tell me if i'm wrong many a times when you're really well dressed up when you go out you have a different level of confidence you feel that yes you have achieved something just because you're dressing well um for and in this covid we're all so used to working in pajamas that we don't realize and you would also believe that in pajamas you really start feeling extremely lazy right as compared to that um when you sit right in front of the zoom meeting dressed up there is a different level of confidence that comes in you right so clothing impacts your thinking also a lot you start feeling a lot more serious and a lot more responsible for what you are doing right uh, eventually it all matters on about what you think about yourself okay if you think less about yourself the person in front of you is also going to think less about you because when you yourself are not knowing your worth how will anyone else know your what your worth is so the way you carry yourself the way you do your makeup the way you accessorize the way you dress up also shows how seriously you are taking yourself and that will ultimately make the other person also take you seriously so in a, in your every day you have to make sure that you spend at least 15 minutes in the morning just to make sure that you look the best version of yourself when you go out once you know that you are looking the best no one else can come and tell you hey you are looking a little shabby or no one else will take you less seriously in a professional setup how you speak how you carry yourself and how you just you just composed matters a lot because there are a lot of people in the hierarchy that you will be speaking to you have to make sure that you show your importance at each and every level of that hierarchy right now uh, here few trip here i have all spoken a lot about how to power dress to it and here if you notice i've written power dress to express and not impress because you're going to impress people with your intelligence what your your dressing is going to do is express a lot about you so by love told you the importance of power dressing and here are a few tips according to me that are very important for power dressing to impress okay sorry express first one dress like you care the first picture where we saw that there was a lady who was wearing a wrinkled shirt versus a way lady who was wearing an iron shirt right you could say the difference automatically that this is shabby versus neat so you have to dress like you care you have to dress as if that particular person meeting or setup is important to you that shows in your attitude and the it will also show in your actions and your behavior right and ultimately it will also come in a, in your words so it's a ripple effect so once you dress like you care the other person will also know that you're caring and they will automatically take you more seriously dress like you care second again coming back to this oh there's a different photo here but it, it's a little blur but again the same thing you will know that the left versus right right person cares a lot the left person clearly doesn't so when you meet them you will look up to these two to people very differently second is it's all about the fit now here i would like to ask and um, i don't know but a few people just tell me out of 35 participants that we have 34 people that you all are how many of you know your bodies well like like beyond the letters or sizes say you're a size s m l or you're these number size 14 16 what else do you know about your body anyone you know don't know i would love to hear some answers anyone
do you know that there are a few body shapes that uh, different kinds of bodies are recognized with okay so let me tell you a little bit about the j journey and how i went on starting the brand and a concept like this this is the first time in india someone has introduced a concept like this Uh, so when i was working in an as an investment banker uh, we were a women dominated team okay and most of us were found a lot of problems in finding good kind of office wear and then good kind of clothes that fit really well even if you find the quality they are mostly made for a lot very skinny people none of us can fit into it so then i did a research and i spoke or i surveyed around 300 women to understand what are the problems they faced while looking for workwear most people complained about sizing right that you don't get the right size or these clothes don't really fit you well that's when i realized that people in india uh, do not get the right size because these size charts are not made you keeping the indian body in mind when you say you are a size 12 14 16 these are all the us uk sizes europe sizes we do not have an indian size chart right so you would also like understand you would also agree with me that you are an m in a particular brand versus an l in another brand right but you really don't know what your body shape is you don't know what you are beyond sml there is a body shape called pear apple rectangle uh, for you to understand what fits you better and best and what kind of clothes to fit you best it is very important for you to first know your body better that is why we introduced a concept called size you and everyone in this chat i everyone in this session i would really love you to check it out because trust me it is going to be extremely helpful um we are the first brand in india to be using a very advanced ai enabled technology so we don't offer web, uh, sizes sml on our website at all we only offer one size and that is size you and we build that size using this technology where with two photos we get 70 plus of your measurements extremely accurately there is a process you get a link you have to follow it and there are instructions in there once you get your measurements and once we get your measurements we tell you anything and everything about your body that includes your body type is uh, what are the key styling tips for your body what should be your styling mantra what kind of celebrities who do share your body type with so that you can follow them for styling inspiration after the session i would love i will just put uh, i would just put this uh, website page on this chat so that you guys can sign up for it and there is a free link that you will get after the session do try it out and please level up your knowledge about yourself first the more you know about yourself the more people will understand you better after that the second most important thing that you need to do is understand what kind of clothes fit you best and look best on you based on your body type if you wear a very loose kind of a shirt that is not made for your body or that is not right fitting for you even if the dress is a 1000 or a 2000 or a 5000 rupees dress it won't look good on you because you have not um taken the fact that it should be fitting you well very seriously ultimately even a simple clothes fit fit well it will look gorgeous so next time you go shopping for a clothes for an important meeting for a casual meeting or for any occasion if it does not fit you well you should not go for it there are a lot of brands like ours like j who offer tailor made clothes we make clothes exactly as per your sizes with the kind of fitting comfort tight etc the way you like because indian body shapes are meant to be more curvy than the global one and hence most clothes that are made are not as not made for the curvy body curvy indian body um so uh, i think after the session you would also we also would send you an email with a special uh code for this college where we where you can just go on our website and shop for anything but i want all of you to get a little capsule wardrobe made for yourself that looks the best for you okay and also know know your body is a little better 
uh, okay, moving on. Uh, yeah, uh, the, this photo again shows the same that the right person has her clothes set up fitting her perfectly. Whereas the person in the middle, not so well. The clothes look loose and certainly not made for her. That creates a lot of difference on how these clothes are looking on it, right? Dress according to an occasion. Will you wear your little black dress and go to your office? Or will you wear a very formal white shirt and go to a party? No, right? You have to see what the occasion is, how big, small, important, less important that event is, and make sure you dress according to that event. Um, for example, I, I was just thinking of an example that I saw the other day. We had gone to a party once. It was an office party. It was not really a friend's party. But there was this lady who had come up with like a very exposing, very short dress uh, that she would usually wear to some you know, or some party with a friend, right? If you are in an office setting with colleagues, you have to make sure that the office um, seriousness is kept, even if it's a party setting. You cannot wear those heavy kind of exposing party clothes to an office party. You have to make sure that if in an office party, we wear something that looks great, but at the same time, it does not cross that line. So you have to make sure who you are dress meeting when you are dressing for that occasion. Let's talk grooming. Now, we've spoken enough about what kind of clothes to wear, but what kind of makeup, what kind of accessories, what kind of shoes are you supposed to wear? Uh, now, the, I, I remember when you know, five, ten years back, there was the importance of makeup was very less. The kind of makeup products that were available, the kind of knowledge about makeup that was available was very less. Now there are a lot of products in the market with like different practices that you can invest in, but make sure that you invest in the right shade for your skin. That is the single most important tool for your makeup. Don't buy your foundations online. Don't buy your BB things or anything online. Go to a shop, take a small pouch, make invest in two to three or three to four important things. Invest in a BB cream, invest in a foundation, invest in one lipstick shade that will go with any and every outfit and any and every occasion. Invest in, if you, if you guys are in Okajos or eyeliners, invest in one piece of that. Just one piece of everything. Make your secret makeup pouch that goes for every, everything. Um, depending on the occasion, you can see, you can judge how heavy or light your makeup should be. But uh, in today's time, it is extremely important to have those four to five pieces of makeup in your wallet or in your pouch that you can carry everywhere. And uh, grooming also includes your hair, your shoes. The single most rule for your shoes is that they should be comfortable. More than looks, I think for shoes it's extremely important that uh, they are right for your feet, for your legs, so that uh, it doesn't affect your posture. But at the same time, they should look you not wear sports shoes to office. So you have to make sure that you find some comfort yet decent looking shoes and you wear according to the dress and according to the occasion. Your hair, your uh, the way you carry your hair, for example, if you're going in a very serious meeting, if your hair is extremely messy like this, um, people will not take you so seriously, but if you're going to create a different kind of impression where you want to show how bold you are or how um, how graceful you are, I think keeping your hair open you know, like style in them well works best. So depending on the occasion, go beyond your dressing and make sure you accessorize well, you do your makeup well, you wear a watch. Don't grow into empty handed. It looks extremely flexy. So little pieces in your wardrobe that you definitely need to invest in. Smell well. This is my personal rule. Um, even today when I'm sitting in front of you, I did wear a perfume as well. Because I believe that when you smell well, you lost your skin by contrast. 
So smell extremely well and like have a little perfume with you already. When you go in front of a person and they, they smell you well, they will automatically, it automatically creates create some positive vibes around So this is something that works best for me and I know, I know most people don't focus on it, but it's a good idea to do that. Last one is maintaining your own style. Um, everyone's style is different and you're not here to copy anyone. If you cannot carry a short skirt, don't do that. If, you, if you're someone who's comfortable in pants and not in skirts, don't wear pants. It's your own style and it's important to dress as per your own style. If you go to copy someone, if you go to an important meeting, dress with someone like you are not, you will not feel confident about yourself confident about yourself. So you you need you have to maintain your style. Make sure you that that doesn't mean you don't try different kind of outfits, but at the same time you stay stuck to what kind of outfits suit you best. So have your unique style and make sure you look uh, look invest more and more pieces around. For me, I think you or power the thing that uh, revolves or a personality revolves around me. Hugs Dressing, grooming, action, girls. We've spoken about dressing, we've spoken about grooming. Girls, obviously, I said uh, about how girls work. Hearts and actions are something that are aligned with each other. I, I said in the beginning that uh, how you feel about yourself matters so much. Uh, so, if you're going and confidently in front of someone, respecting yourself, the other person is automatically going to respect you, right? So your thoughts and your self-worth really matter. And that also shows in your actions, the way you greet people, the way you speak to people, the way you know you walk, the way you keep your hands, the way you keep your legs, the way you do something. All those actions also eventually become an integral part of your personality. So thoughts and actions are equally important. And all of this combined, combined together defines you. So be the best version of you by making sure that each and every of this, each and every criteria is worked on and is focused on one thing at a time, but have your own style at the same time. Uh, that's about it from my end. Uh, these are a few handles that you can follow on our page. Handles, we give a lot of styling tips and tricks and everything. You should definitely check our Instagram out and we also do a lot of sessions and a lot of live sessions with a lot of experts in the industry on each of the, uh, these things. So for women, they also we did a session with someone who's a personality coach and someone who's a workwear blogger. So they both help us understand what kind of things are important uh, when you go out for work this back to work season. Uh, if you would like to shop for some good workwear, you can definitely check out our website. And uh, I think we will be sharing um, a special code with you so that you can get a special discount on the website when you check. And if you have any doubts, any concerns, any tips you would like to know about styling, you can reach out to me directly on my email or my phone. Uh, I would love to answer all the queries. Um, uh, that's about it from my end. Uh, if anyone has any questions, I would love to take them right now. Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, hi, ma'am. This is Madhavi here. Uh, I have a one question. Uh, when there, you know, uh, uh, there was very much hype about side zero and then, you know, at the, at the other side, there were campaigns coming, uh, which were, you know, hashtag stop body, body shaming, yeah, where ha hashtag my size is all size or something like that. So do you, do you think all these campaigns really make difference? And this really, uh, you know, inspire people, I mean, people are following it but then i don't know they just follow it for a while or so and just to uh, just show you know people how liberal we are but they, are they really you know uh, taking it seriously see uh, it depends on which brand is doing it for example if you tell me that a fast fashion brand is going to come and do a body positivity campaign i would like to think about it twice because they themselves don't preach it because they themselves don't offer sizes beyond XL to XL, right? So um, the idea is not to whether to take these campaigns by these uh, brands seriously. The idea is to make sure that you don't fall in the trap of something like a size zero, right? A size
size zero does not exist. Very, very few people are size zero. And you don't want to overwork or overstress yourself to become one. What is important is you love the way you are, you love your body the way you are, and learn to embrace it in its original form. I am not saying not focus on fitness. I am not saying that you stay unfit. But not everyone can be a slim. Neither am I. I am probably most people in India aren't. So um, these campaigns on a superficial level, some campaigns are made to feel, make you feel good. Some campaigns are not. But uh, leaving all of these aside, you should learn to embrace your body. I know a lot of people who don't feel confident in their own skin. That is something that needs to change. And one or two campaigns won't help it. Um, constantly working on it, working on how to express yourself better with clothes, with everything is what is going to help. So first step is feeling confident in your own skin and then focusing on the Yes, thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much. I also have observed one thing on your website. The all the models are they are none of them is size zero. Yes. So, yes. so first shoot that we did, yes. all four models were of different sizes. We have plus size, we have normal sizes, we have medium sizes, we have extra sizes, we have small sizes, we have medium sizes, we have large sizes, we have normal sizes, and we have so much ma'am thank you is there any any other question uh, yes ma'am okay hey, ma'am ruchi here uh, my question is uh, what is the important thing one could do to increase their confidence ha huh. the important thing one you should do to increase your confidence is that you should have a positive mindset you should sit and know what your worth is Uh, believe in the power of subconscious mind and understand that you are not bound by what the society says. You are not bound for what people talk about you or your body or you know uh, say anything about you. What matters is what you think of yourself. So when the day you start thinking, I am amazing. My body is amazing. I look great the way I am. I am great the way I am. And if you, I am, I am one of the best people out there, and I am here to succeed a lot in life. If you think and if you go ahead with these affirmations every day, the way you will be confident, the way you will look confident and you will feel confident is a completely different. Like I earlier also said, dress well. If you dress well, you will automatically succeed. But jamaat me kisi ko confidence nahi aati. <laughs> so you will wear a shirt and a trousers and go out. That is when you will feel confident. 
Thus, many a times we start we get very bogged down with what society says about us, about our body, about the kind of you know our shape. For example, if someone is a plus size, the kind of shaming they receive. Yes, ab um, all of these are very superficial, and all of these I, social media does so much to depress you as much as you can. The idea is not to focus on all of this. And just focus on your fitness and looking the best version of you. Uh, what I follow is, and this is a good idea for me. I since I am running a startup, it's one of the most difficult phases of my life, right? Because I've started it from scratch, and we're still in very early stages, and there are so many problems that are not. But what I do is before sleeping at night and after waking up at morning, I say a few things. I say that yes, Jay will be great. Jay will be good uh, one day soon. I say that I am very good at my work, and I'm sure I will be able to take it to the next level. I say that I am amazing. I am confident. I have the skill set to achieve this. Say positive things and affirmations about yourself every night, every morning, and it will make a lot of difference. Also, if you can, meditation is a great idea. Not a lot of believe, people believe in it, but once you start meditating, um, it creates a lot of calmness or focus in your mind that helps you and gives confidence as well. So these are a few small, tiny, easy hacks or easy tips that you can do to feel more confident about it. I hope that helps and I answer your question. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Any other questions? Yes, ma'am, I do have. So my question is, what do you feel is the cornerstone of one's personality? Uh, I think, uh, uh, like I said earlier, uh, believing in yourself or knowing yourself worth is the cornerstone because once you know and feel that you are amazing and you're worth something and you know your worth, it automatically shows in everything, in the way you speak, in the way you act, in the way you walk, in the way, walk, in the way you dress, um, everything. So I think the cornerstone of the personality is feeling the best version of yourself and knowing yourself well, and everything else will just follow. Okay, thank you. Maitri, I think you have some question. Yes, ma'am. I, I wanted to ask, you talked about getting comfortable in your own skin after like someone body shames you or something. There is different types of body shaming, may it be skinny shaming or fat shaming, but it affects someone mentally really bad. So how, how do you go on about it and try to get comfortable and find your own style in it? Uh, I think you should look at it the opposite way, okay? Um, there are a lot of body positivity influencers on Instagram. Stop, stop, like, start following those kind of influencers and stop following people who are the perfect shape or size and, you know, do a lot of shaming. Uh, when you follow these body positivity influencers, um, they say so much about, because they are mostly not the perfect size as well. Also, a few that I can name and probably put in chat and these are people I definitely look forward to. There is one called Farzuni Vasabra. She is a professor from Micah School of Ideas and uh, she is a plus size. But she says so many bold and powerful things every day through her stories, through her posts, that they start making you feel good about yourself. Because social media can turn out to be very toxic sometimes. So when you follow some people who love their body, you yourself will also start feeling that, yes, I can also love your body. And it is all about changing your thoughts and mindset. Do not get bogged down with what, with what comes in social media. Follow brands, follow people who preach, um, who talk a lot about body, body positivity. Follow us, for example. You will you will see that it's not important to be of the perfect shape to look good. It's just important of, to, of how to style your shape of your body best to look good. 
buy clothes that fit you well. If you're a plus size or if you're very, for example, let's say plus size clothes, you need not buy a loose clothes on you. You need not buy less exposure clothes. You can still wear sleeveless and shorts because it's all about how you dress well, right? Uh, so buy clothes that look and, and like talk to stylists, talk to our stylists to get suggestions on what kind of clothes they look best on you. In that sense and pieces, wear your makeup and just go out and you will get you will get appreciated. So um toxic so Bahar Mandab not just about body shaming. There are people who are, who are there out to say bad things about women, bad things about working women, bad things about anyone who's not dressed or who's dressed in a particular manner. The idea is to avoid all of that and focus on the positive and then to be positive. I hope that helps. And you can you can ask me or you can uh, definitely reach out to me and I will give you a link of a lot of such influencers who will definitely make you feel good about yourself because you will be able to relate to them in different manners. I hope that helps. Anyone else has the question? You can type it in the chat box or you can unmute yourself and ask. Uh, Ma'am, I have just checked your profile. Uh, you have an investment background, but then the technology which you have used is really a latest technology to you know take the measurements online the ai technology which you just talked about so can you just uh, highlight everybody uh, about that um so my investment banking background and my uh, finance background taught me how important dressing is and how important work well my whole idea of venturing into the uh, this stream was first just venturing into work well okay I did not think of how to go about with sizing, but when so many people came and complained about the sizes and fitting and check it, um, we realized that we need to do something about it. And today, in almost every field, there is technology. There is technology in food, there is technology in construction, there is technology in, um, how do you say this, technology in almost everything, right? So why can't there be technology in science? That's when I thought that there should be something that I will to be able to um, help people get the right fit made for them without having them having to go out to the tailor or a designer or spend spend like a lot of money without touching the measuring tape but still get the right fit. I did a lot of research and this is not a technology that I or my team have built. This is a technology that we have we are using. But we are the first brand in India you even using anything like that. So um so yeah, so it was not so much about my background, but it was so much so much about the problems that I wanted to solve about fitting. I just chose the technology way because technology is today is the future of everything, right? And trust me, this technology is so amazing. And we also have a giveaway by the way on Instagram that if you and your friends get this technology and if you try this virtual tailor and you know experience it we are out to give away some gifts as well you try it and then you will know and then we can speak further about it like like how and what this technology but tech is never like to have tech or to be a tech enabled venture you need not be a techie you need to be a techie to build a tech not to have a venture that is enabled by tech these are very two different things for example Nike is led by Falguni Nayar. Right? Falguni Nayar is not a techie. She is also a finance person like me. She was also an investment banker before she started Nayar. She knew nothing about tech and still she has created a tech platform, right, where all brands can come and sell their beauty products. So yeah, so I believe that technology is the future and while I can't build it, I can definitely use it to its best to give the best product to the people. So this is a new concept that we are doing. I do have a tech team that works with me, but uh, this this technology is not something that we do. I hope that helps.
do try the checkout is what i want to say just try it like there's no we're not charging anything there's no money involved in doing it but the experience is amazing yes thank you ma'am Anyone else? Yes, anyone else has the any question? Yes, ma'am. I have one question. Uh, so, does being self-aware or not affect our personality? Yes, definitely. If tomorrow you don't know, if after this session, in fact, if no, if you all don't know what your body shape is or what your body type is and how to style your body best, I will be disappointed to begin with. Because knowing about yourself is most important. And it's not just about the body as well. That is just one part. Knowing about what are your best qualities, what are your weaknesses, right? And how will you work on these weaknesses? Because no one is perfect. Everyone has some imperfections. They are still amazing. But if you are aware of what's not right with you and you take a conscious um, effort to improve on those fronts, it just makes you a better person. So being self-aware uh, is extremely important because when tomorrow you go out and this is again giving you two examples. For example, if you're a short-tempered person, okay, you get angry very quickly. You go out, something happens, not that's not your way, and you meet that person for the first time. Um, they do something and you get angry. What kind of first impression are you already creating? But uh, it's going a step back. If you know you are uh, probably short-tempered, you go to that person, that person does something wrong, you know that you will get angry, but in your mind you're like, no, this is one of my weaknesses, I should not get angry, and you have a tactic. Uh, was my movie, um, it was Munna by MBBS, right, when that um, professor uh, used to laugh whenever he used to get angry. Have your own techniques of managing your weaknesses, and then if you don't get angry in front of them, you create a very different impression, and that is what matters. So being aware of your body, of your moods, of your weaknesses, of your strength. Strength is also very important and that goes with body and all otherwise also. For example, I said that a pure shaped body, the waist is their strength. If you highlight the waist and that is the best way, anything that has a belt here and all of that, um, it will definitely make you look better than any other straight fit. Uh, similarly, if your strength is, for example, you're a very helpful person. The more you help people and the more you know you uh, show it out there and you do it, you feel good about yourself as well as everyone else who creates that impression of you. So knowing what you are best at, what you are not so good at and working on all of these things affects your personality a lot and that's the best thing about it. Thank you, ma'am. Jenny, uh, we just wanted to know, like, what inspired you to take this profession? And because it is something like which is, uh, you know, uh, different. And uh, so, uh, if you would uh, like, we would like you to share maybe your journey or uh, what inspired you to take up this as your profession. Sure. And something about your uh, company, right? Okay, perfect. Yes. So, um, I have always been very entrepreneurial. That was one thing that I always wanted to build something of my own. When you are such a mindset, you keep getting a lot of ideas. Obviously, some ideas are workable, some ideas are not. I remember when I was doing my CA and I was doing article trip, I was really bored of the CA work. I was like, no, this is not something I am should be better now i think huh. so when i was doing my ca work i uh, did not like it so i was like uh, i don't want to do this and at that time i used to do handmade crafting gifts a lot right um so i decided that i don't want to complete my um, 
CA and I want to start my own venture. I went to my boss. I said that, uh, sir, I don't want to do this. And he was like, yeah, fine. Give me a business uh, plan that you have and uh, we'll work on it. If I think it works best, um, I will uh, definitely let you go. And that time I was obviously a kid, so I couldn't do it. But then right when I went into, I finished my CA, then I did my MBA, MBA leveled up my knowledge about business and entrepreneurship. And uh, it also gave me a lot of confidence and helped me convert my personality. So when I did my MBA and like uh, investment banking and like I, like I explained, I realized that there was a problem in this field that no one was solving. I realized that this is probably a problem that I could solve. Uh, Till date, I don't really, so every day I don't really care of what my background is because my background has given me a lot of knowledge about businesses, CA, MBA, everything. But I believe that if you want to solve a problem, you just have to take that step and everything else will fall in place, right? So I took that step. I left my job and I decided I want to try to build this. I will give myself three odd years and I'll see what happens. If it works, if it works, if it doesn't, it's okay. Then as I was moving in the journey, you won't imagine, I first met design. There are, there are such amazing people out there. I am not a designer. So I don't know how to design clothes, right? So then I met a designer in my journey. She, she helped, told me I'll help you for free. I will just help you design your first collection and get you the best fabric for it and all of that. I used to go fabric shopping for her and, with her and then we went and bought fabrics. And then on the same journey, I also met a techie who also agreed to help me. So there are so many people who just come out to help you build your dream that you won't even realize. I never feel handicapped that I'm not a fashion designer or a techie because I have a strong team holding me together. And I believe that when you want to run a business, you are the only, you are, you are, if you are leading it, if you're the boss, you are only managing things. Everyone else is doing it. You, you are the one who's, who, you can't really do uh, the tech. You can't really make your website. You have to manage people who do that. So I went on with that belief. I do have a team right now that works tirelessly to make sure that we deliver the best products. I do have a great customer base right now who love our products. And we're just learning each and every day about every new things. Every day is a journey and every day is a learning and yeah that's it that's how we are here today so despite not having a fashion or a tech background i think i do have a business background so that helps me do any and every business that is out there so i just believe in one thing that uh, before taking any step you should not focus on the negatives you should not focus on what will go wrong. I, the mantra of my life is Jo Hoga Dekha Jaga. So I just take the step. I work my ass off towards it and make sure that I succeed in it. And I give my 200% to it. If it still works, doesn't work out, we'll figure something out. I'm, I'm sure something something good will obviously happen. So yeah, that, that is how Jay happened. And that is how we've been working towards it. Really inspire, inspiring. <laughs> And uh, the actually app for our Women's Day theme, like break the bias. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's really great. Uh, I think we have one more question. Maitri, you were about to ask something? Yes, ma'am. Um, ma'am, you talked about um, foundation and shades and all, but uh, everyone is uh, of cold tones and warm tones. So how do we discover which tone we are of? Oh, so there is a series on our Instagram page that we've done for that as well. There are a few tricks and tips to understand what tone you are. Um, some are based on how your nerves look like. If your nerves are bluish, you're probably a cold tone. If your nerves are a little greenish, you're probably a warm tone. And uh, it will be great if you go to our Instagram page. What I'll do for you today is I we will story all our past posts about um, body like uh, skin tones and skin undertones and everything. You can check out those posts and see um, what are the tips or how do you check your skin tones and undertones and how do you pick the perfect shade for yourself. Okay, ma'am. There's a detailed you. work already done, so I'm not going to waste time explaining the same thing. So you can just go out and check. Yes, yes, no worries. Um, I think uh, that's all the questions we have. 
So thank you so much for answering all of our questions. And thank I would you. like to present a small e-memento from our side as a token of thanks. Um, <laughs> thank you. This is so sweet. Thank you so much. Please share this uh, image with me. Sure, sure. Thank you so much for being a part of our Women's Day celebration, actually. And before we conclude the session, I request all participants to fill up the feedback form for the session. We, you will find the link in the chat box. Everyone is kindly requested to fill it before leaving the session. Uh, I would like to heartily thank everyone for your active participation. We hope to see you tomorrow at our next 3-2022 Break the Bias session where we will conclude our event with a panel discussion. So thank you, everyone. Good day and stay safe. Thank you. Thanks a lot for uh, uh, investing time listening to me. And thank you, thank you Dr. Sarika, a lot for uh, having me here. It was a great session. And I would love to connect with you guys again in the future, definitely. Actually, thank you so much, Jenny, uh, for your wonderful session. And you can see the questions and all, all the participants really enjoyed your session. And we got to know a lot about the same. So thank you so much. Thank you. Please, anyone, and if I have any doubts, please feel free to, to, re free to reach yeah. out to me. So I just request everyone to switch on their uh, videos to, uh, let's click a group photograph. I request quickly everyone to switch on their cameras. Students. It's so nice faculty. to see everyone's faces finally. <laughs> I request everyone to switch on their videos if they I think we have taken the picture. I, I am requ I'm requ uh, requesting everyone to switch on, but I think only a few. Okay, fine. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.